So I found the name. We, we're good with the name. What I'm going to try to find next is, do you remember what year we started messaging John about this, this plant? Last year we were talking about it, but I think we were talking with him in 2020, right? Can you check your... Last year she wrote a thing. Yeah. Hi guys, it's Melissa, your plantita abogada from Tasteful Notes, coming to you today with a unboxing video. So this video is about a plant that has been on our wish list um, for a few years now. As far as I have, I could tell, it's been on my wish list since 2020. Um, yeah, if I thought it was expensive then. Clearly, I know nothing because it's a lot more expensive now. Quite excited to share this with you. This is the video that I promised you a few videos back. Um, it was supposed to be part of my uh, top 10 wishlist plants of 2022. But by the time we filmed, we had just bought it the night before. Yeah, good times. I have no regrets. Um, but before we get started, let me... Um, go ahead and get into our disclaimers really quick. One, um, I'm not supposed to be considered an expert in this. I am a hobbyist like you. I read a lot. I look up experts, actual people who are in the botanical field who discuss these things. And those are the people you'll refer to as academic resources should you need to, okay? Number two, um, get a second opinion about everything that I mention, especially if this plant ends up on your wish list. Um, unless you're here in the Philippines, pricing is probably going to be a little bit different. Um, and our growing conditions obviously are going to be quite different as well. And then number three, KKB tayo. Kanya kanyang bayad, meaning I'm not paying child support, plant child support for anything that you guys, uh, end up doing after watching this video, okay? Now, with that being said, I'm so excited. I can't tell you how excited I am. We didn't expect it. We certainly didn't expect it just because we'd been holding off for so long. We thought that it was pricey and then it kept getting pricier. Of course, if you know which plant I'm talking about, you also know that its name has changed and with the name change, seem to be a price hike. So um, we found one that was in within our price range and we're like, you know what? It's time to just get it. It's time to just bite the bullet and get the plant. And Plant Daddy came through wonderfully. So this plant, uh, we were watching a live selling of um, someone we enjoy quite a lot watching online uh, that would be RL Hilton Summers and his plant page is called RL Plant Source International and we've bought a few plants from him in the past we got the poly poi poi from him I'm not even gonna try to say its name I'm gonna flash that name at the bottom of the screen um, we've gotten a El Choco Red from him Nangaritense um, yeah, so we've gotten a few things from him and the plants come, come out great. I have not had a bad experience just yet. Hopefully, this is not the first time. Hopefully, we have a great experience continuing forward uh, as we ha we've had in the past. Quite well packaged, top to bottom, stable, sturdy, fast shipping too. So it arrived in the country yesterday I think is what I was told and they shipped it off immediately we got it here in our area um, overnight early in the morning actually so let's go have a look see and there you go thank you for choosing us and being a valued customer we are so grateful for the pleasure of serving you and we hope we met your expectations for any issues and problems, don't hesitate to contact our team members. With regards, R.L. Hilton Summers. Thank you. Okay, let's go see what we got, people. I'm so excited. Knives make me nervous. 
and as useful as they are, I'm still nervous. So bear with me as I use the scissors to cut around. Okay, so RL is located in Thailand. So he's got access to these great plants, right? Jewel-worthy plants. In fact, um, a plant that was on my wish list that I'm probably not gonna buy anytime soon. Um, I also saw on RL's page. That would be the Philodendron imbilii, if you watch my top nine videos. Um, he mentioned it on his plant page. I remember seeing it and I was just floored. So yeah, RL's got access to these fantastic plants. And, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm envious. I'm grateful that someone is actually sending over quality plants from Thailand and at very, very reasonable pricing. I mean, he's probably lower than some of the prices here in the Philippines. Counts for a big deal. I mean, he imports the plants um, or exports them. So I'm sure some of the pricing of his plants includes um, overhead costs as well, but man, still such a great deal. Really, really good deal. <clears throat> and last night I was surprised to hear that he actually sells to other countries as well. So I would check him out. Um, I can't say how he is shipping to other countries, but based on his shipping here to the Philippines, I can say that I'm a satisfied customer. And if this box isn't so secure, I don't know what is. There we go. Okay, and let's pull this guy out. This is a first for me. Usually his plants come um, uprooted. And I understand why. You gotta deal with um, entry requirements here in the Philippines. Most countries have that requirement where the plants have to be uprooted um, so for inspection purposes. But yay. And there's Paolo. And I hope you didn't see the name. Even if you did, it's okay. Let's go see what it looks like inside. Lots of cushion to protect the plant. <laughs> okay. Pterodactyl noises. <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let me enjoy this first glimpse, okay? Hello, darling. Baby, you wanna come see it? I'm hiding it from the camera so that I could enjoy the first look, but if I face it that way, you're gonna have to see it anyway. So it's potted. It wasn't sent up uprooted. And it's very well packed, I mean, Cotton galore. Uh, we got an unfurling leaf. It's beautiful. As you would tease me. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> but we've got a new unfurling leaf. Um, still needs to unfurl and completely harden. We've got fenestrations already. Okay. Time for the introduction. This is what was formerly known as Monstera de la Serata and is now the proud owner of the name uh, Monstera Burley Marx's Flame. Yeah, and check that flame out. This flame is gonna be quite gorgeous when it opens with all those fenestrations. Yes, gorgeous plant. Um, let me just open up the bottom part real quick. Let me, let's air this out just a little. I see the roots at the bottom. Um, we'll take some video so that you could go ahead and enjoy some root porn as well. But it looks good. So well-rooted, shipped well. I don't see any bugs or pests. Just. Next plant, 
Nice plant. Well done, RL. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the different forms of Monstera Deliciosa, but there are several different forms, right? Um, gosh, I wish my friend Jed was here. I call him the Monstera King because he just is all about Monsteras. Let me get this out of the way, it's so disrespectful. But the Monstera Burley marks his flame it was actually considered to be something separate from the Monsteras. Um, what I found here is under its original name um, in 1977, it was problematic because of a few reasons. Um, one of the specimens used to describe the De La Serata was later identified to be an Epipremnum pinatum, right? Epipremnum pinatum, um, or for us here in the Philippines, Tebatib, and these guys, you know? It's like, yeah, no, that kind of doesn't work either. I mean, just for us alone, knowing the Tebatib and this, different parts of the world um, are found in different parts of the world, right? And looking at the structure right now, I mean, quite different. Thicker leaf, a more rigid leaf. The ribs, or the, the veining is quite prominent, both on top and on the bottom of the leaf, compared to the Epipremnum pinatums, at least the ones that I have. Um, secondly, the second reason it was problematic is because there were four other different Monstera um, varieties from Costa Rica. Yeah, four different Costa Rican Monstera species were also included under the name of De La Serata. So it's like they saw whoever originally named the plant De La Serata said, oh, it's got fenestrations, it must be a De La Serata, which is problematic in itself because we've got Epipremnum pinatums who have fenestrations. Um, we've got who else do we have? Monstera deliciosa, Syriana, um, gosh, the Brazil, I think, has fenestrations. You can't throw them all under one name and just say, yeah, they're the same thing, when they're clearly not, right? So, quite happy that it was just renamed um, just last year, no, baby? Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it was quite exciting news, too. Um, this plant was originally found in famed botanist Roberto Burley Marx's uh, garden. Hence, it's quite appropriate that the plant is named or has his name in it. Um, yeah, it was found in his collection in Rio de Janeiro and introduced into cultivation from there. It's not known as with the, um, what is that? As with the Burl Marx fantasy. Again, another plant where it's not known where he collected it from. It bears some superficial resemblance to Monstera deliciosa, and I think we could probably say that through the green leaves. The Monstera deliciosa is not as rigid though. It is especially um, identified with the Monstera deliciosa variety called Syriana. Um, I'll go ahead and flash a picture of that on the screen. And you'll see where the resemblance lies. It lies more in the more, it lies in the more mature forms. But and, the, and again, another fantastic plant that I would want in my <laughs> another fantastic plant I'd want in my collection. My birthday's coming up, and he's ignoring me. Okay. Um, so earlier I mentioned that they also had four different Monstera species along with that Epipremnum pinatum included under the name Monstera de, de, la Serata, de la Serata. And the four species that were included, sorry baby, um, have, been, have since been published separately, right? They were, or they are now known as Monstera dissecta, Monstera glau glaucosens, Monstera lentii, and Monstera pinati partita. I'll tell you what, I've got a pinati in the back and it looks nothing like this. And it will look nothing like the mature form of this either. So for it to be named De La Serata was completely, um, completely wrong. Now, as far as care, if it's anything like 
the monsteras that I have. It'll like well draining soil. Um, we have monsteras in brighter conditions than I have here. So they are under an 80% um, net. And the pinati on top of that really, really enjoys those conditions, the pinati partita. And it also enjoys climbing. I think the pinati partita we have is close to 24 inches in length as far as the leaf leaf blades go, right? From one end to another. Uh, 18 to 24 inches. We'll go ahead and include pictures or video of that guy as well so that you can see what I'm talking about. But you give it something to climb, it'll go crazy, it'll go nuts. That's why I've got this guy here um, ready to repot him. Um, as far as the medium goes, if you've watched my past videos, you, you know that I also I also recommend that you, you check the medium and you make it the same as to what you have your other plants in. Just for one, um, just so that your watering schedule would be the same for everybody. But also too, you know your growing conditions. You know um, how quickly your soil dries up. You know how much water they need. Your, your soil, I'm talking about your potting mix how much water you need to water it with in order to keep that thing moist. Um, RL's mix is a little too moist for here. Yeah. So, a little too moist for here. Um, I water like a water bender, like I'm Katara, you know, just spray that thing and let the water come out of the bottom of the pot. That's me. And I know that this potting mix won't work, so I have to repot this guy um, to make this relationship work. I'm so excited. And um, as far as fertilizer goes, it looks like we're pretty much the same. I see some slow release fertilizer here. Yes, there we go. So slow release fertilizer is what they have working for him. And that's the same as what I do here. So it's not gonna be much of a difference. So we discussed water. We discussed lighting, we discussed potting mixture, um, and fertilizer. I think we are good to go with this. I am going to go continue repotting this guy, and I hope you enjoy this boxing, unboxing. It's never gonna be boxed because I'm never selling it. Maybe I'll sell a propagation or two when it gets bigger. Just let me enjoy it for now. Okay. <laughs> so as I make out with my plant in front of my husband. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Uh, don't forget to hit subscribe um, and hit that notification bell so you get notifications of other videos that are coming up. I promise they're gonna be good. Um, I'll also include a write-up of what I just discussed earlier on Facebook. And you know I'm gonna be posting lots of pictures of this, especially this guy right here, this leaf as soon as it opens up and hardens, because I'm just crushing so hard. Um, check out my Instagram for those pictures. I'm on Instagram as Tasteful Nodes as well. So, <laughs> until next time, guys. So, ulitin, keep your nodes classy and tasteful. Bye.